Greetings and salutations, I am your humble Adobe instructor, AJ Wood, and you're watching episode number 35 of I Create Content. Hey everyone, appreciate you tuning in to today's show. If you caught our last episode, we were taking a look at Adobe Lightroom, specifically how to sync changes within the develop module. Today, we're gonna to take a look at Photoshop. I've got a quick tutorial on how to create light trails for a custom background. Let's go ahead and take a look. You can see on the screen in front of you, I've got a white background, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just flip my foreground background colors, you could also hit X on your keyboard to do that. And I'm gonna change my white foreground color to a dark blue. So I'm gonna go here with kind of a, actually kind of a bright blue. Click OK. And I'm gonna to go to the filter menu, go to render, and I'm gonna render the clouds filter. If you want to run this filter again, notice right at the top it says clouds, it says command or control F. So you could actually run this a couple times until you get the mix that you like. I think this is the one that I'm going to use. I don't know, maybe that one's better. Once I get the mix that I like with Filter Render Clouds, I'm gonna go back to Filter and Blur, and I'm gonna do a motion blur. I wanna have some implied movement here, so notice what that's doing to the clouds behind it. I'm at about 100 or so pixels, so I wanna have a little bit of movement, not too much. So I click OK. Now I've got this kind of background with a little bit of movement to it. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this pipe. And I'm going to change my colors back, make sure that my foreground color is white. So I hit D for default colors, then X to flip to the foreground color. I'm gonna grab my selection tool, rectangle marquee, and I'll go ahead and just make a rectangular selection on the screen. This is gonna be a little pipe that I float in my background. Have it here on the screen. I'm gonna fill that with white. So you can do edit, fill, and just choose white as your color. You could also do alt or option backspace to fill with the foreground color, which happens to be white. Now I wanna have some shape to this. So notice I left the selection marquee up because I want this to have a bit of shape. To do that, I'm gonna grab the gradient tool. Notice that my gradient is black to white and I'm gonna grab the reflected gradient. And what I'll simply do is hold the shift key to get a straight line and I'll drag from bottom to top right there within the selection marquee and that's gonna give me just a little bit of shape. So if I deselect, by doing Command or Control D, now I've got kind of this floating pipe in the middle of my background. So what I'm gonna show you to create is light trails. It's a very popular effect, all these different laser light trails, you see them in ads, you've seen the Sprint commercial that they had a few years back. I'm gonna show you how to create that here using layer styles. I'm also going to show you one of the problems and the fix that people have when they try to recreate this effect. So, to create the light trails, we need the pen tool. Before I demonstrate the pen tool, I want you to see there is a freeform pen tool. So I'm going to grab the freeform pen tool first. I'm going to go to the top where my options are. You want to verify that you're setting the pen tool to paths. Make sure you're not creating a shape layer. So the freeform pen tool is easy to use because what it does is let you press and hold the mouse and you can simply just draw your path freehand on the screen. So here's my path. What I want you to notice about the path, not very smooth. It's actually got some kind of corner points because drawing with a mouse is like drawing with a brick, okay? So if you're using a pen tablet and you have superior pen, uh, superior hand, school, uh, hand skills to what I have, then you might like the freeform pen tool, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that. It doesn't work. It's under the paths panel. I can go ahead and just trash that, throw it away. Let's do that again. This time I'll grab the actual pen tool. So with the actual pen tool, I'm gonna make a smoother path. I'll go ahead and just press and hold the mouse and drag. You can see I've got the rubber band option on and I can actually see the line that I'm drawing. 
So I think that looks pretty good. If I want to move this point because I don't like the placement of it, I can hold the command key or control key and I can adjust that point. So notice I can move it in space while I'm holding the command or the control key. Do my next line, I'll pull this one and then I'll go ahead and make it come up top. We'll make a little bit tighter curl here and then I'm actually going to make it curl real tight here at the bottom as it actually goes out. Okay, so something like that. Okay, I think that'll work for us. Notice that as I move the pen tool away, it thinks that I still want to draw. If you're finished with your path, you can go ahead and just change to the move tool. That'll leave the path selected on the screen. Notice now I have a work path under the paths panel. What we're going to do is put an outline stroke around that path. Okay? Before I do that, I need to set up a couple things. Number one, I'm going to create a new layer. Number two, I'm going to set up my brush. So let's go to the layers panel. This is my pipe layer. I'm going to make a new layer, label it light trails. This is where I want the light trails to show up. So have the layer selected, that's ready to go. Now I need to go to my brush tool. My color for my light trail is going to be white. So I've set the foreground color to white have my brush. I'm going to check my options. I'm using stroke thumbnails. I want to select a brush that's tapered. Now you might want to select a brush that's tapered with a hard path hey, or a hard outline. It's really your choice. I'm going to use a feathered outline for mine. Notice that I've got a tapered brush. Now I'm using the stroke thumbnails. If you don't know how to set your brush presets, if you don't know how to pull this up on the screen, you can just check out my video for customizing brushes, which I did a few episodes back. I'm going to go ahead and pick the tapered brush. I'm going to set the brush stroke uh, width to about 15 pixels. Now I can go to the paths panel, go to my options and select stroke path. This is going to use the brush tool. It's also going to simulate pressure so the ends will be tapered. When I click OK, there is my path. If I go to the Pass panel and deselect it by clicking underneath, now you can see here is my little laser path going around the pipe. I need to go to the Layers panel. We're going to add layer style effects to give that a little bit more oomph. So I'll go to the Light Trails layer, go to my Effects, bring up my layer style panel, and we're going to use an outer and an inner glow. So I'll start with the outer glow. I'm going to change the color to be really more of a light blue, almost a white. I'll change the blend mode to be linear light. And then as I change the size, you should be able to see that on the screen. Now for some contrast, I'm just going to make this temporarily pink so you can see there's the glow showing up right there as I expand and contract it. So I want it to come out maybe about 10 pixels. You can see it right there. I'll go ahead and pick an inner glow. This one here I'll do a darker magenta color. Again I'll change the blend mode to linear light and then here as I adjust the size you can see how that starts to fill. I might leave just a little bit of white so we get some highlight there. You can also play around with your contours to get different effects. And you certainly can adjust the overall opacity or change the colors. Now I'm going to leave it with this magenta pink just for contrast. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And here I've got that little laser right trail, but it doesn't really look like it's going around the pipe. It looks like it's going in front of the pipe. So, I could grab the eraser tool, but to make this a little bit easier to work with, we're going to use a layer mask. And this is where you're going to see we run into a problem right away. So, I'm going to add a layer mask to this light trails layer. I do that by clicking on the layer mask icon. Remember, white reveals the layer, black's going to hide it. So, I need to choose a brush. I'm going to set black as my foreground color to erase. And I'm going to make sure that I use a hard brush, right? One that does not have a feathered edge. I'm going to zoom in so that you can see better. And I want you to see what happens when I erase. When I go to erase this, notice that the glow 
is on either side of the capped edge. This means when I try to erase it back here, the glow is still going to show over that pipe. So we need to change a blending option. I'm going to go back to the layers panel. I'm going to double click my effects and I want you to see it's under blending options. This is the only item in that list that doesn't have a checkbox. So right at the top, notice I'm on blending options. We're going to check the box that says layer mask hides effects. So look at the difference. When I check this, notice how the glow is disappears. That's what I want. I want the layer mask to hide that effect. This is going to bleed into the pipe. I don't want that. So I'll check that box. Now I can actually finish masking this. So I'll make my brush a little bigger. Right? And it looks like I have a problem. There's a problem here. I'm not really sure what the problem is. Actually, I do know what the problem is. Do you know what the problem is? I selected the layer. I didn't select the layer mask. That happens sometimes. You're working in a hurry. Here I am. I'm painting with white. You're seeing white on the screen. Take a close look at the layers panel. I'm zooming it up for you. I'm on the layer. So what I need to do is undo. So Commander Control Z to undo. Take a look closely at the screen. I selected the layer. So I'm just going to take my cursor, click on the mask. Now the mask is active. I can go back to what I was doing, which was erasing. So I'm just going to erase behind here. That's one. Erase this one there. That's good. I can move this now. That's going to go over. This is going to go under. Hey, this is going to go under. That's going to go over. This one's going to go under. And if I zoom out so that you can see better, this is that laser light trail going around that path, uh, going around that pipe. Now, I can easily duplicate that. Remember, I didn't erase the work path. So if I activate that, there it is. Well, if I go to my toolbar, I can grab my selection tool. I can move that path. So let me just move the path just a little bit. And then I'll use my direct select tool and I can actually grab portions of that path and change it. So I'm just going to move this a little bit and adjust it. Have it move in different ways. So we get a different effect. So then I can go and do the same thing. If I want to do it on a different layer, make a new layer. This will be my second set of light trails. I'm going to go to my brush set my brush to a tapered 15 pixel or 12 pixel brush. I can even go thinner if I want. Hey, let's do, we'll do 10. Now all I need to do is go back to the pass panel and I will stroke the path with the brush, simulate the pressure to taper the edges. There's my second light trail. So I can go ahead and duplicate the effects. I just simply grab the effects and pull them up. You want to make sure you're duplicating the effects. Hold the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC. Now I've duplicated that effect, and if I need to paint it, I just add a mask, go ahead and paint. Hey, make sure you're on the, light, on the right layer when you add the mask. So then I can play around with that light effect. So let me go ahead and deselect the path. This would be with two light trails. This is with one. Hey, a finished document might look something like this. There are some more laser lights for you hey, with a person in the photograph. So this has been a quick tutorial on how to create light trails. Remember those blending options when you're working with your layer mask. Then you can put the trails around different objects. So I hope you appreciate the tutorial. If you do, give it a thumbs up. Hey, if you like the videos, remember I'm here every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So subscribe to the YouTube channel. I answer the questions that you ask with videos. You can leave me messages on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google+, leave comments on the YouTube channel, or my blog, ajwood.com. Appreciate you guys tuning in today. Everyone have an excellent afternoon, and I will see you next time.